deploy a Vercel Edge function using Jenkins. Here's today's starting point. I have a Jenkins LTS controller version 2.387.1. Attached to this controller, I have an agent that has the Vercel CLI installed on it. Down in the description of this video is a link off to a sample repository that we're going to be taking a look at. Before we take a look at that repository, let's understand what an edge function is from a Vercel perspective. So here we have the quick start for Vercel edge functions. In order for me to have gotten started with this, I needed the Vercel CLI. I needed to create an edge function, but before I did that, I needed to make sure that I had the most recent version of Next. And then I went ahead and created this exact project, and we'll see this in a few moments in the repository. Out of the Create Next App directive, we get this code that's going to be at pages slash API slash hello.ts. Now we'll see this again in just a few moments. If we wanted to deploy this directly, what we would do is we would go ahead and just do a Vercel deploy, and then we would check it out to see what's going on with the function. Now, obviously, it's not going to be this simple. We're going to make it a little more complex and try to make our deploy a little more bulletproof. One more thing I want to take a look at before we get to the repository is we're going to take a look at the Vercel CLI. Now, on the quick start, we just saw Vercel deploy. That was the only step. But we can see here there are lots of other options that we have with Vercel CLI. We see deploy, but then there are going to be other commands that we call within our Jenkins file. OK, for the moment you've been waiting for, let's go ahead and take a look at the repository. When I created the app following the create next app command, I got the je-myapp. That's just what I named it. So if I take a look at inside this, and we take a look at pages, and API, and hello ts, what we see here is exactly the same as what we would see in our quick start documentation. At this point, I've not made any changes to this. We're just taking it as is to see how this works. Now let's go back up to the root, and let's look at our Jenkins file. Again, everything else that's here was created using the create next app command. If we take a look at our Jenkins file, let's take a look at the stages first at a quick glance, and then we'll take a look at all the other details of this. So we're first going to make sure that we have access to the CLI, that's Vercel version. And then we're going to do a pull just to make sure everything's in sync from Vercel. Next, we're going to do a build. Do I need to do the build? No, Vercel will take care of that for me if I didn't do it. But what I'm trying to do is package everything up so the build doesn't have to occur then. Next, we do the deploy. And then finally, I'm going to sleep for five seconds and then do a curl against the endpoint that's created. Now, you'll notice that I'm referencing a variable called workdir here. Well, what is workdir? If we go back up top, what we'll see is I have a workdir defined as je-myapp. This is the name of my application that we can see here at the root of the repository, je-myapp. So when the deploy happens, it's going to follow whatever the name of the app is. If we go back into the Jenkins file, you'll also notice that we have two other items here. We have a Vercel scope, which has my name in it. That's actually just the account ID within Vercel. And then I also have a Vercel token. Now, typically, if you're running from the command line, you would say Vercel login, you would give it credentials, and then you would have a token within that area that you don't have to use. It's just you're now logged into Vercel, everything's good. But when I'm trying to do this within Jenkins, I don't have that capability. I guess I could log in, but a token is a little bit easier to deal with. So if we go back down here and take a look at the three primary commands that we have here, we have pull, build, and deploy. You'll notice on the left-hand side of these commands, we have a scope, a CWD, and a no color, and also the token. So the no color is for when we run the jobs, we won't get ASCII art effectively within our logs. We don't want to see ugly things. We want to see nice, clean logs as much as possible. We're going to pass in token. So by passing in the token, we don't have to actually do a Vercel login. We also have scope. So we're just specifying, OK, which application do I want to go to? The token is associated with the scope, but I'm just being explicit in setting the scope. And finally, the CWD. This is change work directory. Because my application is within the je-myapp directory, I need to specify where these commands need to run. So I'm doing that within the dash dash CWD. Now let's take a look on the right-hand side of the commands. On the first one, we're saying pull yes, because typically the pull asks a question. We're just saying the dash dash yes, so it doesn't ask us a question. Can't really answer a question as it's running from the command line within Jenkins. Next up, I'm building for prod and also with a dash dash yes. So again, it asks questions. So I'm giving it a dash dash yes to ignore the questions. Just assume yes, I'm good with that. And I'm also building the prod flavor of this. And then this is where it gets down to the point of the deploy. Because we've done the build and we 
targeted it as prod, then I'm saying prod for my deploy. And I'm also saying pre-built because I've already built the app prior to this. Now, before we run the job, let's go ahead and take a look in Vercel. So everything we've done up to this point is getting you ready, if you've not done this at all, to go through, get all your setups right, and hopefully be able to replicate what I've done. If you go inside Vercel, and then go to your account, and go down to Settings, and then on the left nav, there is a Tokens sidebar item. So go ahead and click on that. And then what you would do is you would create a new token here, you would set the scope, and preferably set an expiration date. If you do set an expiration date, don't forget to create a new token before that token expires. So you can see here, previously I created a token called jenkins dash for sell. I copied the value of this, went back into my controller, I went to Manage Jenkins, and inside of Manage Credentials, I've already set up Vercel token here as a secret text. So let's go ahead and go over to the job that we've already defined. This Vercel Edge function pipeline job is pointing at the Jenkins file within the repository. Let's go ahead and click on Build Now. And while that's running, let's go ahead and go back over to Vercel. I'll click on Overview. Right now, there are no projects. Just keep that in mind. We'll go back over here to Jenkins, and we'll go into our build log. OK, now that the job is completed, we can see here at the very end, we run curl, and we receive back a JSON string that says, hello from where it is. I'm now an edge function. That's what we saw if we take a look back at the quick start. That is the value that's coming back from the function. But let's take a closer look at the log to understand what's going on. So from our perspective, we have a green checkbox. Everything appears to be successful. If we go ahead and scroll down from the top, we do our check for Vercel version. That came back successfully, so we're then able to go ahead and move on to the pull. The pull found everything that it was expecting. Then we moved on to the build. The build takes a little bit of time. So we can see the compile for our pages, API hello.ts. We go ahead and scroll down a little bit more. We can see the output from that. And then we get to the deploy. When we do our deploy, because we have specified pre-built, it's actually retrieving the item that we built in the build step. And then it went ahead and deployed that to the function out on Vercel. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBees. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.